In this next project, we'll try and explain the identification of a circuit vent and the sizing of the circuit vent and the circuit vented branch. In order to do this, this is a good drawing to use for it, as it'll take care of quite a few of the rules on the actual circuit vent. And if we look at this, number one gives it away. It says it is a branch, as you can see here with number one, which would be the turquoise line. And we'll designate that as a branch. We size a branch according to its hydraulic load that dumps into the branch. And on this particular drawing, all the toilets, as illustrated here, are all tankable toilets or four fixture units each. So a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven toilets, seven times four is 28, plus three labs at one fixture unit each would be a total of 28 plus three or 31 fixture units. This would give this branch a four inch in size as a three inch branch can only handle 27 fixture units. So here we have a four inch branch. Now we're going to start kind of backwards. We're going to start right from the actual circuit vent or designate where the circuit vent is. And this is where the dry vented part of the circuit vent is. The wet vented part of the circuit vent begins at the end of the circuit vented branch, which is right here, or the horizontal solar waste pipe connection. It continues right up through the two labs. The dry vented part of the circuit vent continues right to this point here. In order to size a circuit vent, you'd have to look at table 2583. And under table 2583, it says sizing a circuit vent is by its hydraulic load of all the fixtures that are drawing air from it and its developed length. The hydraulic load for this circuit vent of all the fixtures that are drawing air from it would be all of these toilets plus these two laths. We wouldn't count this lav because it has a dry vent above it. So that would be a total of 30 fixed units if you count the seven toilets plus the two laths. Its developed length is from the horizontal soil or waste pipe connection, which would be right down here, right down to the wet vented part of the right down to the wet vented part of the circuit vent all the way to the vent stack stack vent header or outside air. In this case, it would be to outside air. So its developed length would be 1 meter, 8 meters, 18 meters, plus the final two of 20 meters would be its developed length. If we look at table 2583 and intersect, intersect these two figures, we would find that the circuit vent will be two inches in size. So now we have just sized the actual circuit vent for this circuit vented branch. Now let's go to the next vent and the next vent would be this yellow pipe right here and of course on the upstream side of its junction are two vents which would make this a branch vent as illustrated down below. The hydraulic load will be all the fixture units that, or all the fixtures that are drawing air from this point upstream which would be all of them, which would be a total of 31 fixed units. The developed length of a branch front is from the furthest soil or waste pipe connection, not all the way down to here like the circuit vent, just the furthest soil or waste pipe connection, to the vent stack, stack vent header, or outside air. So in this case, its developed length would be 7 meters, 17, 19 meters, for a total developed length of 19 plus hydraulic load 31 intersected on the same table as the circuit vent 2583 and you would get a size of also 2 inch. So here we have a 2 inch branch vent. Now let's go to our next dry vent or vent and that would be this vent right here. Notice how we required another vent here and according to the rules this particular vent 
is an additional circumvent. The reason why we need, um, I'll illustrate this in orange, here is the wet vented part of the additional circumvent. Here is the dry vented part of the additional circuit vent. And of course, we size an additional circuit vent one pipe size smaller than the circuit vent. In this case, we had a two inch circuit vent. So we don't have to look at any tables. It's quite easy to size. It'll only be an inch and a half in size. The reason why we needed an additional circuit vent, as I was alluding to earlier, is because of two rules that require an additional circuit vent. And the one rule on here is that we have more than a nominal horizontal change of direction, more than 45 degrees, as you see, 245 degrees of change here. This requires an additional circuit vent, which would have to be put in the center of the offset. This is because of hydraulic load or pressure difference when you put an offset in a circuit vented branch it requires some sort of relief in this case we call it an additional circuit vent the only other reason for an additional circuit vent is if you had more than eight tra trapped fixtures between the two vents in this case we only have seven but we do have a normally horizontal change of more than 45 degrees thereby requiring an additional circuit vent We've already sized it. It's inch and a half, one pipe size smaller than the circuit vent. And that's for the drive in part. It also need not be larger than two inches in size. Now, if we look at the, so let's write that down here. If we look at the wet vented part of the additional circuit vent, there are rule requirements on this, and that is that it must be sized as a wet vent, according to table 2521 but it also has to be a minimum of two inch. And you'll find that usually on most diagrams if you go by a minimum of two inch that will be the correct number because that is the minimum. The reason why we designate it as a minimum of two inch is once again because of the hydraulic load that passes through the circuit vented branch the code dictates you need at least a two inch wet vent to break or to relieve that hydraulic load passing by this horizontal circuit vented branch. So now we've sized the wet vent part, we've sized the dry vent part of the additional circuit vent. Let's go to our third vent and that is every time you have a circuit vent you require at least one relief vent. Let's write this down here for the additional circuit vent. And a relief vent will designate as our green line here. And the relief vent is really easy to size. It is also one pipe size smaller than the red circuit vent. So here we have three vents. We have a circuit vent, an additional circuit vent, and a relief vent. The similarity between the additional circuit vent, the orange pipe, and the relief vent, the green pipe, is they are both sized one pipe size smaller then the red pipe which is the circuit vent. Now there's also a similarity between the orange and the red pipe and that is on the fixed unit load that can dump into each one of their wet vents. Both of these vents you're allowed to dump in up to one and a half fixed units on an inch and a half trap arm and up to two inch and a half trap arms into each of their wet vents. On this particular drawing we've done the max or we we've done up to actually a little less than the max one fixed unit each per lav and they have an inch and a quarter trap arms each and this one we dumped only one fixed unit and one inch and a quarter trap arm but we could have done up to one and a half and two inch and a half trap arms each if we wanted to so that is a similarity they both have the same rule on the hydraulic load that can dump into each one of their wet vents well, the relief vent is different in this particular case. We could have used any, we could use this as a relief vent, or we could have used any horizontal soil, horizontal or vertical soil or waste pipe that was downstream of this circuit vented branch. We could have used them as alternate relief vents, 
or this because we don't have one we'll use this one as our relief vent and we can dump up to six fixture units into this green pipe these we can only dump up to one and a half up to two trap arms one and a half fixture units each which would be a total of three for either one of them here we can dump up to six fixture units and they don't have to be tied in symmetrically as they do here symmetrically meaning at the same level here they could be tied in at different levels so there is a difference between the relief vent and the additional circuit vent and the circuit vent so now let's go to the final part and we're going to show you the sizing here and here is the circuit vented branch the black pipe right from here to here and of course number seven is the wet vented part of the circuit vent in this particular case it's a minimum of two inch because it has to be sized by table 2521 the wet vent table and on the wet vent table it says when there are toilets on the wet vent the minimum size has to be two inch so we'll write that down we have a total of two fixed units dumping into it but it is serving toilets so it will require two inch in size now let's go to the final part number six which is the circuit vented branch and number six as we see pointing to it here has a total hydraulic load of 14 fixture units dumping into it to size the circuit vented branch you count all the fixtures that dump into it in this case it will be the two labs and at this particular point it would be these three toilets so these three toilets a total of four fixture units each would be 12 fixture units plus the two labs would equal 14 fixture units at that point we also know according to clause 2492 in the code book that after three toilets every branch or building drain must be at least four inch in size so this will designate this number or this size pipe as four inch as that will take precedence <coughs> now let's continue on as you can see four inch now we know that the vertical part right here is only two inch because that is the circuit vent this is four inch notice how I've installed a clean out on the end of it and due to the clean out rule this whole pipe is going to end up having to be four inch because I only have one clean out here which makes the rest of it quite easy number three as we can see over here is still a circuit vented branch its hydraulic load is going to be a bit different we're going to add these two toilets onto it plus the lav which will make 23 fixed units it's still going to stay four inch because we have a four inch clean out on the end as you can see and the same thing with number two all we're doing here is adding more of a hydraulic load now there's 27 fixture units added for number two it will also still stay four inch for I have a one clean on the end and we have to have at least a four inch clean out to serve the circuit vented branch all the way through and of course we have a clean out here it's still going to remain four inch so this is basically how you size a circuit vent and a circuit vented branch.